So, Jimmy, when I was going through our flute collection earlier, I found this flute, this student silver flute. Is this the type of flute that you started on? No. No, the flute I started on was, uh, a, we call it in Ireland, a B-flat flute, and it had five keys, mm -hmm. six holes. And this was a, a stroke of good luck because it was small enough. It was probably about this size, maybe something like that, which meant that when I played it, I didn't pull my embouchure to the side because I was very small when I started learning a flute. Now, then uh, I joined a flute band and we, we, it was basically a fife and drum band and we went marching with this sort of stuff, you see. And then I, I, just, I got more interested in the flute and I, I got another flute, which was slightly bigger, uh, but it was still not a full concert flute like this. It was an E-flat flute, which was probably like about this size. And this belonged to the flute band. We had B flat, F, E flat, and bass. And it was very nice. It sounded very nice, the harmony of all these things, because the, uh, and also we had piccolos, so there was a big range. Um, but it was my good fortune to play these flutes because they were small enough for me to handle and it didn't pull my. Mm -hmm. But the only, the only thing that I did when I got my first flute was very interesting when I got my first flute. Uh, I was still a bit on the small side and in order to hold it, I used to stick my chin in my shoulder like every other kid. <laughs> and I would play A natural with the G sharp key down and, and this key. And you see, basically, it didn't make any difference to the sound. And uh, it meant I could hold the flute better. And it's very, it's very important for me to hold the flute properly. So, to this day, I still use this fingering. Mm -hmm. And I still think it's very important to hold the flute in a good, solid way. So then I, I got my first silver flute. And how old would you be then? Uh, how many years would you have been playing? Well, I'd been playing already maybe about three years. When I was 11 or 12, my dad uh, bought a flute from a friend of his. And it was a real concert flute. But I got one before that. Actually, it was a Selmer, and it was no good. I think it was no. Shh, don't say that. I can say <laughs> that. This is this is we're talking way back yeah. when flutes were not so well made. Yeah. You know, I mean, nowadays they're made very well. This 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 flute here uh, is technically better than the flute that I played on when I was in the Royal College of Music, uh, because I still played this flute that my dad bought, and it was quite a good flute, but it needed all sorts of attention. And then I earned enough money in my first year at school to buy a Haynes flute. So I bought this Haynes and it was closed hole like this, offset G and low C. And that was the flute I played uh, until I got my first job in the opera. Wow. When I was 21. And then when I was 21, I bought, um, I bought a flute from Mr. Cooper and that was open open hole, straight line. And uh, I managed to play that just without any trouble uh, because Jeffrey Gilbert had taught us very well how to hold the flute and uh, how to get a good position with the hands. So it wasn't a trouble to change. But the only thing I did change was I took the, the headpiece off my Haynes mm -hmm. and used it on my Cooper flute. And I played on that flute right through to the Berlin Philharmonic. Wow, amazing. And then I got my first gold flute. Is that the silver flute that we still have in our collection? <clears throat> the silver cooper? Uh, yes. I think it's that. Yes, it's a wonderful it is. flute. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Great. And it still has that Haynes head on it. Mm -hmm. So you played these, these other flutes. And when, we, when you were in the band, what kind of pieces did you play when you were very young? Oh, we played marches, you know. I mean, uh, our whole life centered around marching. <laughs> And if a piece wasn't in a mar uh, if a piece was in three four, no good. It had to be in two four with drums. 
but you are very good in three, four. Have to, and you're a very good dancer, too. So, Thank you. So you must be good with that. And so when you switched to your, to your big flute, um, and you were about 11. Is that when you started playing more classical pieces? I remember you say that yes. you, you went to study with Billy Dunwoody, right? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I studied before him with another flute teacher called Ardwell Dunning. And Ardwell was a very good teacher. And I wanted to know when I was 11 years old why I couldn't breathe so good <laughs> and why I was having trouble breathing. And he said very simply, just wait. You will manage it, but you need to be a bit older to do that. And this was very profound advice because there's a lot of teachers trying to get the kids to play music which is too advanced, right. breathing-wise, from a point of breathing technique. Um, but I never got involved in that and I always learned simple tunes. For example, I never played the, uh, I never played the, uh, the Nielsen Concerto until I was 25. And I think I played also the the Eber Concerto when I was about maybe 22. And today the kids are trying to play them at 12. But I was already two years solo flute in the opera. Yeah, yeah no, I know I understand. And then I learned it. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's really important they have to develop these techniques. Well, you have to, you have to start playing simple tunes to right. begin with. And then these tunes become slowly more advanced. This is what happens on... on instruments like the violin. Mm -hmm. Kids play simple tunes on the violin. They don't suddenly start to play the, the Beethoven violin concerto after owning a violin for a year. You know, they, they're still playing little pieces and these little pieces are graded in a way that each piece advances some part of the technique and the way of playing a little bit further, each piece. But we don't have that on the flute because uh, it's a very, very curious thing. Every flute teacher wants their 13 year old kid to play the Carmen Variations, like me. That's well, right. the news is they're not going to do it because they can't do the breathing to begin with. And never mind the articulation. And I think what both of us have seen over the years through our teaching in the different areas of the world is that they have these grading systems and over the years they've gotten more and more difficult for the kids. I mean, what they say, the Lieberman Sonata is like a, one of the, something a high school kid plays now, right? Yeah. Didn't we find this out in yeah. one of the syllabuses? I mean, I have great I mean, difficulty with the Lieberman really? Sonata. <laughs> it's yeah. a difficult piece. Yeah. I mean, I think that what I know what I've learned from you is that be, you have this incredible discipline, but you still work on the real techniques of the flute. We oh, come sure. off a tour, you're practicing scales, you're practicing your tone. And I still say to myself, how does he do it? Well, it's very easy. You just <laughs> practice it. Yes, you just keep special. in shape. And you try to keep in shape and bring your shape a bit higher every yeah. time. Yeah.